Robert Lucida. My fight record is 14 wins, 5 losses. I'm fighting out of Phuket top team in Phuket, Chelong, Thailand. I'm from Sydney, Australia originally. Well, uh, when I first got into the sport, uh, I was a big fan of ruthless Robbie Lawler. He's, a, he's an awesome fighter, you know. And um, just as I was coming up in the game, all my training partners were like, man, you're just like a pit bull. You know, you just, and I was like, man, there's so many pit bulls, you know. And at the end of the day, like, I went into my fights and I, I looked for the finish from start to the end. And when I get that chance to finish, I'll keep going. So um, the nickname Ruthless started to come about and uh, it just went well with my name. And um, like I said, man, I never proved that I'm not ruthless and I uh, intend to be ruthless come fight night. Man, I played rugby league my whole life. I was, I was a pretty good rugby league player. Um, as I said, I didn't really come up from the, the best uh, neighborhood. So, um, so I hung around with the wrong dudes and did the wrong things while I was growing up. But um, continue to be successful in rugby league. When I was a teenager, about 14, 15, I found a, a UFC video um, at the in the martial arts section. You know, I ran out of Jet Li and Jackie Chan movies to watch, and I saw that set as real as it gets. I watched it, man, I was hooked. You know, I loved it. I tried to show it to friends of mine and stuff. No one else jumped on board. You know, it wasn't really a big thing in Australia for a long time. So it was something I continued watching and being a fan of, but um, there was no weight classes, there was nothing like that, there was nowhere really to train. After a while, like when I was about 20, I found some old Pride videos. And then I saw Sakuraba kicking ass, and uh, you know, he was little and he was taking on the biggest dudes. And it, it made me think to myself, you know what, man, like if this guy's doing it, I'm going to do it too. Because I always knew that I'm short and I'm going to be short, and I, you know, I'm not going to be a heavyweight. So even before they made the weight classes and stuff like that, seeing Sakuraba made me believe that I could take on anyone no matter what size they were. A couple years down the track, you know, um, started getting a bit bigger and stuff like that. So um, there started being some gyms popping up. Um, you know, I was playing rugby league, continued playing rugby league, but um, it wasn't going where I wanted it to go because it took some time off. So when I went back to it, you know, I felt like I, I'd done enough in league and uh, I wanted to pursue mixed martial arts so um, so I travelled like 50 kilometres each day so I can go and train for an hour and you know it was a hard job, like it was a hard thing to do but it was my passion and it was something that I knew that I was born for you know ever since like I was young I was into like fighting and I got a brother that's four years older and we punched on all my life and uh, you know street fighter the game Street Fighter was something that I was like, man, if I could live like that, you know, it'd be a dream come true. And I'm living it now, you know, so it's, it's cool. And 1FC is the promotion that I chose above all promotions. Um, I had a big win last December and um, I got offers from all the top promotions, UFC, Bellator, 1FC. 1FC gave me the best offer I felt and me being an Asian-based fighter, uh, being a fighter from Asia and having like Asian ties, like Asian background in my, my family and uh, you know I just I felt like this was the place for me you know so um, ever since I went and fought for them and ever since I've dealt with them they've been great they've been nice to me Victor True the owner Matt Hume you know the matchmaker vice president and um, you know they've dealt with me okay they dealt with me good you know it's never going to be perfect in any relationship you know so there's a bit of back and forth sometimes, you know, but you've got to try and work out things. And um, I don't have a manager, so I've got to deal with situations myself. But, um, you know, a, a major factor of why I chose 1FC was the rule set. As I said, pride was the thing that made me really want to fight. Like, that, that changed my mind from saying I, was, I enjoyed the sport to saying this is what I want to do in my life. So um, the rule set is pretty much pride and UFC mixed. You know, and as far as the fight goes, 1FC is as real as it gets. There, there ain't no contest because you can soccer kick a guy while he's down. You can knee a guy while he's down. There ain't no baiting people. Like if you get put against the cage, you can't put one hand down so you get, don't get kneed. If you do, if somebody shoots for a takedown and they stuff it, then they could probably most likely get soccer kicked after that because, you know, they're going to get punished for, for attempting the takedown. They can't just sit on their knees and put their head down and, oh, you know, maybe take some punches in the head. They're going to get kicked in the head. 
you know, so it makes it a real fight. You know, the rule sets is, uh, yeah, of course, I think it suits me because I like to fight. You know, like I'm a real fighter, I think, you know, and, uh, but I train all my skills. I, sl I sub black belts in BJJ and, uh, you know, I out wrestle with NCAA wrestlers and um, I out box like professional boxers. So, um, you know, I'm confident wherever the fight goes. But um, to be honest, I never believed that I was the best in any area, but I believe I'm the best in MMA because that's where you put it all together. And, um, you know, it, I'm new to this sport, but now I've done my apprenticeship. Now I'm a veteran. Now I'm ready to become a champion. Yeah, 2008, I walked into a gym. I started training the same year, started fighting. And, um, you know, I didn't really come from a martial arts background, just had some street fights and played rugby league, you know. And um, look where I am now, you know. I think I'm the number one pound for pound fighter in Australia. There might be some other guys that contest that, but. Um, you know, I, I plan on proving it soon enough and I feel like this is only the beginning for me. I've done what I've done to get to this point to develop my skills and I feel like my skills are at a certain level right now where I'm the best I've ever been, I'm the fittest I've ever been and I know how to cut weight and I know how to fight, you know, so I'm just going to go in there and scrap and I'm ready to die in there, mate. So if the guy that I'm fighting is not, he's in for a hard night. I'm fighting Eric Kelly this weekend on uh, in one FC, it's a number one contender fight, which I, I feel that I earned and I deserve. I don't think he does, but um, you know, he's a fan favorite and he's the people's champ. So I plan on taking that title off him. You know, I want to show them that I'm the people's champ. They say he comes to scrap, mate. I come to scrap. If you watch me fight, I don't take no steps backwards. I take step backwards so I can counter punch and so I could hurt people. You know, I ain't running from no one. So I'm going to come after him, I'm going to attack him, and I'm going to come to bring the pressure. His fight record is nice, he's 10-1, and one. he's um, got a lot of submissions. But you know, you look at the level of athletes that he's submitted, and how he submitted them, and it, to me, it doesn't faze me at all. You know, I think I can destroy him on the ground, and I think I can destroy him in the wrestle, you know. He's going to have to wrestle, out-wrestle me to get me to the ground as it is. And then once he gets me there, I don't think he's going to be like, in, in a good situation for him anyway. But the truth is, I'm the one who fights for the fans and I'm gonna keep it standing because they call him the Manny Pacquiao of MMA. I'm the white pack man, so I'm gonna show him. So I'm gonna put my fist on his chin, get my hand raised and I'll make it a fight. And I'll make it, I'm, I'm ready to box with MMA gloves 15 minutes. I don't think he is. I think he's gonna throw some silly kicks. You know, I don't know what, he, I don't know what else he's gonna try and do because I don't care. But the bell's going to go and I'm going to go after him, you know. And I'm going to go after him 15 minutes if I have to. And if it finishes before that, great. You know, they say that there's a title seven weeks later coming for the winner. Man, I don't give a fuck. If it's the bloodiest, most gruesome fight that one FC's ever had, you know, I'm going in there to fight. I'm going in there to hurt, you know, because I do this for my family. I provide for them. They're sitting at home in Australia while I'm here in Thailand. My wife's having a baby in August. I was having a baby in the middle of August and I still signed to take the fight against Koji Oishi if I won. That goes to show what kind of person I am, what kind of man I am. So Eric Kelly can, he can come, he can be his best, but I train in the best gym in Asia. One of the best gyms in Asia because Korea has some good gyms, but you know, we're right up there and I compete with any gym in Asia. You come to put care top team and people know, people know we're beasts, you know. We don't muck around here and uh, I don't think he's got the training partners I do. You know, I saw in his, his last fight he fought a nobody, to be honest. You know, they say he submitted somebody. But before that, he lost a fight to an area for the belt. You know, uh, I beat like my last four opponents in a row, three of them being like in the top 50 in the world at some stage. You know, one of them was number three in the world, Lion Takeshi. You know, Rodolfo Marquez is a beast, Yusuke is a beast. You know, I'm not worried about Eric Kelly. I'm training for him, you know, I'm training hard. I don't care who I fight, I'm coming to bring it to him. Man, if it, well, look, I know that I do my best and God will take care of the rest. I know that anything can happen in a fight, you know, but I know I ain't never been put to sleep. I ain't never been knocked out. I ain't never been TKO'd in the gym or in a fight. So when his fans try and say he's going to knock me out, he ain't never knocked out nobody, you know, in all his fights. 
how the fuck is he going to knock me out if he ain't knocked out uh, Ji Ling Bo or whatever, there's some Chinese dude with a 1 0 record. How is he going to knock out Ruthless Rob the Cedar? So his fans want to talk. They make me crazy, man, because when I fucking knock him out, you know, they're going to cry and they're going to love me. You know what? I do this for my family, you know? And I do this for anyone who supports me. Anyone who sees a real fighter and they see what I'm doing and they see that I'm coming to bring the fight and they appreciate it, great. You know, because I can dance, I can try and score points. I ain't counting points, I never fought amateurs. So for me, it's kill or be killed. I go in there to fight and I go in there to finish. Shin Yoyoki, you know, he's a, he's a guy that I, that I liked and respected and watched in the pride days in, uh, in Jap Japanese MMA, he was cool, you know, and had some cool submissions. But um, so because I've watched him fight so much and because I've seen a lot of him, you know, I know that now I feel like Man, after a guy gets knocked out a few times, he starts getting like chinny, you know. So uh, I, I treat him as black belt BJJ, white belt chin, you know. And I got a black belt in everything, mate. So, you know, I got a fucking gold belt, you know. But I ain't never got that gold. I don't care about no color belts, you know. My Thai trainer taught me that there's only one belt, the gold belt. And the only way to get that is you win it, you know. So I never cared about no belts, but yeah. Shinya's cool, Shinya's coming to break my arm, I'm coming to break his face. So, um, you know, I hope he drops down to 145 and I get to challenge him, not because I don't like him, because I do like him. I want to fight, you know, my idols, so they become my rivals. You know, I know that I'm at a man at 66 kilos, as a featherweight, I can take on any man in the world. And when I say that and believe it, some people think I'm out of out of line to think, oh, Jose Alto, oh, whatever. But you know, he's got good leg kicks. What happens when I get right in his face and I throw my hands? You know, I'm a man just the same size as him, probably bigger, you know, and I know I put people to sleep. So why can't I have that confidence, you know? Shinya Aoki's been knocked out by so many dudes that I know I could probably knock them out too, you know? Shinya Aoki's fight at Featherweight, he fought against Cody Stevens. Cody Stevens won't last a round against me. He's a bum and he knows it. You know, like I don't care. I don't care about fighting. When I signed with One FC, I said, "There's 30 guys in the vid division, from pretty much from, from all the way from Pakistan, never fucking fought, all the way up to guys like Shinya Aoki, and I'm happy to fight each one of them, one after the other, because it's my job, you know, and I'll push for it. That's why I'm going to take the fight se like seven weeks after this fight. God willing, I win, you know, because for me it's win-win situation." If I go home and I spend time with my family and I watch my, my third daughter get him born, or I, I train for a fight and I go and I win a world title. So for me, it's win-win, you know? So I'm ready to die in there, you know? Like, um, for me, it's looking back at stuff and thinking, you know, were you a man? Like, did you quit on yourself? And I'll never let that happen. So I go to a sleep and I had never slept before. So, you know, Shinya Hoki, I'm not really worried about him doing that. I'm not necessarily worried about much from Shinya. Shinya's got good judo and um, he's got good jiu-jitsu. Um, he starts from a leg kick, I mean body kicks now and stuff like that. He thinks he's more tired of fighter from old, but, um, but he's a southpaw and you know, the, the biggest counter to a southpaw is that right hand. And uh, I've got a pretty decent right hand, you know. So Shinya will have to watch out for my right hand and Eric Kelly will have to, have to watch out for my left hook because his right eye is messed up and my left hook's not bad either, you know?